Hi everyone, uh, Patrick here. In today's video, I'll be talking about SFF Spotlight episode uh, 34. As you can tell here, this is a completely new background. And yeah, I just got a new bookshelf, but do note that this probably isn't the final formation for this bookshelf yet. I'm still in the middle of working through it. But do tell me, if you have watched my previous videos, do you prefer this background or uh, the previous video's background? If you prefer this background, then I think I will start using this background for my future videos. But anyway, uh, as I said, today's video will be about SFF Spotlight episode 34. So it is time to talk about some new novelty release, new cover reveals, new special edition, and new book news in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And just like usual, there are probably almost 30 topics to talk about today. I will start immediately by talking talking about Brandon Sanderson related news. There are plenty of stuff to talk about today. And the first one, Brother West has confirmed there will be a new Stormlight Archive all new deck building game to be released in the year 2024. This will be released together with their uh, I think upcoming tabletop RPG Stormlight Archive inspired as well to be released in 2024. The plan is right now to release these two games close or probably really close to the release of Stormlight Archive Book 5, currently titled Knights of Wind and Truth. So for those of you who love this kind of video games, and also, of course, I'm super excited about Stormlight Archive Book 5, this is good news for you. But onward to the next topic, again still related to the Brandon Sanderson stuff and Cosmere stuff, this is about Mistborn Era 3. Now for Mistborn, the title for Era 3 has been confirmed by Brandon Sanderson. It is still a possibility, not uh, totally finalized yet, but this one is a bit of a spoiler. If you haven't read The Lost Metal yet, I will not be the better of spoilers here because I think the title it can be considered as a big spoiler in the Cosmere, just in case. So if you really want to know what the title is, I will leave the link to the interview in the description down below. Sanderson talked about this casually in his interview with Seventeen Shut. But moving on to the final Brandon Sanderson related news, this is about uh, the cover reveals to Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and also something to do with the entire UK edition for Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere books. So I think some of you might know about this if you are a Brandon Sanderson fans. Uh, the US and the UK cover art for Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, which is the third secret project novel, has been revealed and it looks absolutely beautiful in my opinion. Uh, Tran Nguyen, the cover artist, is an incredible artist and I think she did such a fantastic job on this cover art. Now, the thing is, for the UK cover art, it seems like Brandon Sanderson has mentioned there is a plan to do a complete overhaul for all of his Cosmere books for the UK edition. Now this can be a bit of a problem for those of you who collect Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere books in the UK edition because uh, I think for those of you who don't know, the UK edition, all of them are illustrated by Sam Green and all of them features the same similar design. This is still okay for Yumi and the Nightmare Painter because as you can see here, the cover art still features a white background and I assume uh, the spine will feature the same design just like usual. But I don't know how it will go for the rest of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere books. Sanderson talked about this on Reddit and as you can, as you can probably guess, uh, no one is happy about this. So I don't know what Brandon Sanderson and Golangs will be planning for the future, but I think Sanderson has to think really deeply about this because readers really care about uniformity and that's one of the best things about the UK edition for the Cosmere books by Sanderson. So that's about it for Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere news. For the next one, we will talk about Ryan Cahill's new novella. This is for The Ice, the third novella in the Bound and the Broken series. And this one, it finally has a release date. Uh, the release date for the third novella will be 23rd of September 2023. And I believe Ryan Cahill right now is working on the fourth novel of the Bound and the Broken uh, series of Empires and Dust, which will be the penultimate volume in the Bound and the Broken series. I am pretty excited about this. The Bound and the Broken is currently one of my favorite ongoing series right now. And if you haven't read The Bound and the Broken yet, you still have some time to catch up before the release of uh, The Ice. Maybe because Of War and Ruin, one of my favorite books of the year, is still, well, it is still one of the biggest books that I have ever read. It is a thick one. But again, it is worth it. Very much worth it. And I look forward to reading The Ice uh, next month. And moving on to the next topic, Ryan Cahill is not the only one releasing a new book. Apparently, Anja Sapkowski, the author behind the Witcher series, has also confirmed in an interview that he's currently writing a new Witcher book. Now, I do not know what the story will be for this one, but I, it seems like the author has mentioned that this one will not be, well, it, not, it will not focus on Geralt. Or maybe it might focus on Geralt, but it definitely will not take place after the story of uh, Lady of the Lake, which is the final book 
chronologically in the Witcher series. I still haven't read the series past Sword of Destiny. Yes, I haven't read Blood of Elves yet, but I don't know. I think there are many, many of you who are a fan of the series and maybe this will be an exciting news uh, for you. I do absolutely love the game, especially The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, but I must say, honestly speaking, uh, the books so far have been a bit disappointing to me. Fingers crossed when I read Blood of Elves, it will be it will rejuvenate my interest to continue with reading the series. And onward to the next topic, this is still related to The Witcher. So this one is about the TV show adaptation. Some of you might know about this, but if you don't, well, the season 3, uh, the season 3 TV show adaptation of The Witcher has a significant drop in viewership. This is I do not think this is a surprise. We all know that Henry Cavill will be leaving, leaving the show after season 3 and that will definitely influence the viewership in the season 3 of The Witcher. I still haven't watched a season 3. But however, <laughs> the producer Tom McBaginski, he said that changes in the TV show needed to be done because American viewers apparently cannot appreciate complex and well long story which is absolutely insane. You just have to focus on adapting the books as faithful as possible. If you need to make changes, do not stray away from it as too far. And more importantly, focus on better writing. I know this might come as a surprise, but maybe, maybe the show just suck, especially season 3. That could totally be a possibility because if what Tomek Baginski is saying is true, well, show like House of the Dragons, Game of Thrones, or Succession will not ever succeed. But look at how successful and how critically acclaimed they are. So yeah, this is just insane. I thought about making a Salty Patrick videos about this, but I also cannot because as I said, I haven't finished reading the books yet. So after every drama happening in the TV show adaptation of The Witcher, it seems like uh, season 4 will suffer even more if it's actually being produced. I know that many viewers have already considered uh, season 3 as the final season of the TV show. But moving on to a more positive topic, let's talk about the season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen. So season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen, the second part of it will return on August 31st, 2023 and it will adapt the Shibuya story arc. Those of you like me who have read the manga will know just how crucial and important this story arc is. Many readers have considered this to be the best story arc of the entire Jujutsu Kaisen series. So yeah, this is exciting, especially because part one, which I have finished watching, uh, the first five episodes, have been adapted incredibly well uh, from my perspective anyway. I know that there are quite a lot of complaints regarding episode four. This is something to do with Satoru Gojo's pose, but I do not think that's too much of a big deal. I have no idea why it is such a big deal to many viewers. I think it was done incredibly well. So yeah, I'm obviously excited about watching the next episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. And if you have watched uh, the TV show adaptation uh, so far, do let me know what you think about it. And finally, one more topic regarding anime. This is regarding, uh, well, it is something to do with the previous video I just posted. Uh, in my previous video, I talk about some web novels that I really want to read someday. And one of them is Lord of the Mysteries. And in that video, people commented saying that apparently the anime trailer for a uh, lot of the mysteries have been announced recently and I watched it and I must say it looks amazing. This one will be a Chinese anime so it is called Donghua and I look forward to watching it but before that because the anime will be released in the year 2025 I think there's still some time for me to read uh, the web novel yet. The first volume of Lord of the Mysteries have been completed. It is 3 million words long. Let's see whether I can finish it uh, next year in the year 2024. After watching the trailer for the anime my excitement to read the series have certainly been increased and I think I will end up reading this sooner than I expected. And now one more topic before talking about special editions. This is regarding my Michael J. Sullivan's Ryria book. So Michael J. Sullivan have mentioned on Twitter recently that his books, some of his books, are free to read on Royal Road. Yeah, this is including his newest book, uh, The Game. But more importantly, you can read the third and the fourth novel in the Ryria Chronicle series, The Death of Dulgat and the Disappearance of Winter's Daughter for free on Royal Road as well. And yeah, this is the third and the fourth novel in the Ryria Chronicles. If possible, try to read the first two novels first in the Ryria Chronicles, which is a prequel series to the Ryria Revelations. But I think this is such 
a great, well, such a great endeavor to be able to read uh, his books uh, for free. Plus, the death of Dulgat is actually a standalone tale in the world of Ryria. It is also one of my favorite books by Michael J. Sullivan, though I think it became one of my favorite books because I have become attached to the characters through reading Raria Revelations and also the first two books in the Raria Chronicles first. So if possible, again, as I said, try to read some Raria books first before reading Death of Dulgat and also The Disappearance of Winter's Daughter. But I will leave the link uh, to the announcement in the description down below. Make sure to check it out if you have been interested in trying out some of Michael J. Sullivan's books. So that's a wrap on news. Now let's talk about some special editions and I will start from talking about Kickstarter campaigns. And today I have two Kickstarter campaigns to mention. The first one will be for Fate of the Wizardoms by Jeffrey Kohanek. This one will be done in two omnibus and it will cover the entire series, the first book up to the sixth book, being completed in two omnibus. And just like usual, it will have a new cover art, new interior artworks, new map, and more. It will be done in a more high quality uh, production value compared to the paperback edition. And for those of you who are a fan of Fate of the Wizardoms, do know that the Omnibus edition is coming and the Kickstarter campaign will launch at the end of the month. And the last Kickstarter campaign I'm going to mention today will be once again a reminder that Legends and Lattes Deluxe Edition by Travis Baldry published by Redmark Creative. The Kickstarter campaign is currently ongoing. There's less than two weeks before the Kickstarter campaign ends and so far everything I've seen about the production value on this edition is absolutely incredible. Justin Gerrard has always been one of my favorite artists and Sean King did a fantastic job on designing this beautiful edition. I'm still so surprised that Reed Mark actually managed to nail Justin Gerrard into doing this special edition because as far as I know, we don't see a lot of artworks uh, from Justin Gerrard in many fantasy books, which is a shame because I think he is one of the best artists out there. So yeah, for those of you who are a fan of Legends and Lattes and you want to get yourself a copy of the Deluxe Edition, this is your last chance before the Kickstarter campaign ends. So that's it for the topic of Kickstarter campaigns. Now let's talk about some special editions. And of course, just like uh, pretty much the majority of SFF Spotlight, I will start by talking about the Broken Binding new announcements. And the first one, this is still related to Legends and Lattes. The Broken Binding has announced their special edition for Bookshops and Bundas, which is the prequel novel to Legends and Lattes. So for those of you who manage to snack a copy of Legends and Lattes, the Broken Binding edition, you will be able to get Bookshops and Bundas Broken Binding edition easier. And I think it looks pretty great. I still haven't read this book yet, even though I own the advanced reading copy for it for quite a while now. But yeah, uh, the advanced reading copy that I got, the format is still, let's just say that it doesn't look good. And I hope that I can manage to snack a greatly formatted e-arc before the release of Bookshops and Bundas. If not, then I will just have to read this one after the publication date. And moving on to the next one, this is a big one from The Broken Binding because this is one of their best special editions so far. Maybe even the best in the subscription part because this one, Broken Binding, has announced the books that will be chosen for the month of October until the month of December. And it is the Powder Match Trilogy by Brian McClellan. The special edition for the Powder Match Trilogy will feature 10 new artworks, all of them done by Rene Eichner. And I'm telling you, these artworks, all of them looks amazing. So there will be one for the naked hardcover for The Promise of Blood, The Crimson Campaign, and also Autumn Republic. And then the front and back in paper of each book will also feature a new artwork by Rene Eichner. And if I'm not mistaken, the spray edges will also feature a connecting artwork by, again, the same artist. So yeah, in total, there will be 10 new artworks for these three books, and I think that's awesome. The Pado Match Trilogy is a beloved series by a lot of fantasy readers, uh, myself included, and I cannot wait to see the final result of this production by The Broken Binding. It seems like they keep getting better and better with each day, and I am happy because I still remember the day when I was one of the only person uh, promoting the Broken Binding. So yeah, it's really surreal to see how far they have come. Plus the owner, Matt, is a great person as well. And now one more The Broken Binding news and then we will talk about other special editions. This is related to the Last War trilogy by Mike Shackle. So Broken Binding also confirmed that there will be a special edition, a special hardback edition for The Last War trilogy by Mike Shackle. I love this trilogy. It is one of the most criminally underrated trilogy. If you love grimdark, you love action-packed story with great characterizations, definitely read The Last War trilogy. And now for the first time ever, there will be a hardback edition for We Are The Dead, 
a fool's hope and until the last and congratulations to mike shackle for this and well done the broken binding so that's it for the broken binding the next special edition will be for the black magician trilogy by trudy canavan and this one will be published by irumi Crate. i haven't read this series yet i have seen it so many times on bookstores but the cover art the new cover art will be done by park sunga and the embossing on the hardback will be done by no one designs and finally the end papers will be illustrated by diana duorak i am so excited about this uh, and papers because Diana is a great artist and I cannot wait to see what she will do for this special edition. The price for the entire set will be £70 plus shipping. So if you are a fan of the Black Magician trilogy, then make sure to put this on your calendar. But if you think £70 is expensive, well, the next one, uh, the next special edition I'm going to mention will be even more expensive because I will be talking about The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, the Folio Society edition. Folio Society has announced they will be doing a limited edition, limited to 500 copies of The Shadow of the Wind. Now, some of you might know that The Cemetery of Forgotten Books is one of my favorite series of all time. I think Carlos Ruiz Zafon is a talent lost to the world too soon and I love this series so much, so much. And when I heard the Folio Society is doing a limited edition for the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, I was terrified because I have, I had a feeling I would be spending so much money on this special edition. But after seeing the artwork, honestly speaking, I am not a fan of the interior artworks very much. This kind of artwork is so not suitable to my style. I really thought that Vincent Chong will be doing the interior artworks, but apparently not. So yeah, I, I'm still not sure about this, but well, I do not think I will be getting myself a copy of the limited edition. But if you want, well, there's still a chance to get it. I still have three more special editions to spotlight today. And the next one will be for the 50th anniversary edition for the Forgotten Beast of Elth by Patricia McHillip. So I haven't read anything by Patricia McKillip yet, but I have seen The Forgotten Beast of El well, so many times on many bookstores and also many readers have mentioned how much they love Patricia McKillip's books. So this one will be released on February 2024 on the author's birthday. And I think I will try my best to get myself a copy of this one because this special edition will be illustrated by Stephanie Lo. Stephanie Lo is an incredible artist. If you haven't checked out her artwork yet, I think some of you might notice her artwork from the special edition for Tail Chaser Song by Tad Williams, published by Grim Oak Press. It looks incredible. All the artwork that she did for Tail Chaser Song, all of them looks enchanting, and I cannot wait to see what she will do for this edition, the Forgotten Beast of Elth 50th Anniversary Edition. And for the next one, this is for the Waterstone Edition for Empire of the Dam by Jay Kristoff. This is probably the first out of 40 new special edition that will be announced for Empire of the Dam. But honestly, it is hard to blame this kind of business practice because every every special edition for Empire of the Vampire, I think when sold out really quickly and I think it will be the same for this Waterstone edition as well. So. If you, if you are someone who wants to get yourself a copy of the Waterstone edition of the Empire of the Dam, make sure to get it as soon as you can, if it's not sold out by the time I posted this video. And now for the final special edition, this is for a manga and yeah, the deluxe edition, the deluxe hardcover edition for Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura has been confirmed and the first deluxe edition will be published in the, uh, I think in December 2023. I will try my best to get myself a copy of this one. Vinland Saga is one of my favorite manga series and I own uh, the Berserk Deluxe Edition for, I think from volume one until volume 11. So yeah, I will try my best to get the hardcover deluxe edition for Vinland Saga Omnibus as well. If you haven't read or watched the Vinland Saga series yet, make sure to do it. It is such a great tale about obsession, revenge, and redemption. Such a great series, whether you decide to read or watch uh, the manga or the anime, you cannot go wrong. Especially the anime for season 2 which covers the slave arc. The music, the voice acting, everything really elevated the quality of the storytelling. Cannot recommend it highly enough. But if you want to stick with the manga and you want to get yourself, well, the most beautiful edition, then I think this upcoming deluxe edition will be it. And now let's move on to the next section of SFF Spotlight. It's time to talk about some cover reveals. And the first one I want to spotlight today will be for To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Molly X. Chung. This will be a debut novel published in the year 2024 and it will be an asian inspired fantasy and the cover art is done by si Jia hong i think it is one of the most beautiful cover art that i have ever seen si Jia hong has been doing a lot of great cover art lately for plenty of asian inspired fantasy books and this is just another example love this cover art very much and i look forward 
to finding out whether this book will be suitable to my taste uh, or not. But the cover art is definitely top notch. But for the next cover art, I cannot say the same thing because I am not a fan of this cover art. This is for The Hidden Queen by Peter V. Brett. The cover art is done by Martina Fachkova. Usually, Martina Fachkova, everything that she does usually always fit my taste. But not this one. This looks like Frodo. It really looks like Frodo in the cover art and also there is nothing that really pops from the cover art here. The typography isn't too good, the design is just okay and I don't know, I'm just not a fan of this cover art. This is the US cover art of The Hidden Queen which is the sequel to The Desert Prince. The cover art to The Desert Prince is done by Tommy Arnold so again that's a cover change, a change in cover artist and I am not a fan of this change because I think some of you might actually know this Martina Fachkova's uh, cover artwork. She did the cover art of Justice of Kings and also the sequel The Tyranny of Fate. Both of them looks amazing but this one is not suitable to my taste but do let me know whether you like this cover art or not. I think some of you probably know from my Goodreads and also some of my videos that I am really not a fan of The Desert Prince so I do not think I will be continuing with the series anyway but as far as cover art goes, this one is not it uh, for me as well. But I need to mention that the fault doesn't lie solely in Martina Fachkova. Martina Fachkova at the end of the day still has to follow the art director so I think the result of the cover art has something to do with the art direction. And the next cover reveal will be for Gok Magok and Lududa by Jeff Noon and Steve Beard. I haven't read anything by these authors yet, but the cover reveals this looks incredible. The cover art is done by Ian McQuay. As you can see here, the cover art of the first book and the second book, they connect with each other. The front cover art and I assume the spine will be as well. And this one has been pitched to be suitable to those who love Gorman Guns and Perdido Street Station. Honestly, I haven't read these two books yet, but the premise sounds too good and bizarre to miss. I will try to read this one and keep my fingers crossed that this will be suitable for me and this one will be published by Angry Robots. And the last cover reveal of today's SFS Spotlight will be for The Keeper's Origin Omnibus by Janice Andrews. This cover art is done by Kalma Hul and I think this actually turns out pretty great, which is a bit of a surprise because this is not because I doubt Kalmahul's talent. This is not because of that. Kalmahul is a great artist, but all of Janice Andrews' books, all of them tend to feature symbolic cover art. It tends to be more simplistic rather than featuring a character in the cover art. But this one definitely worked nicely and I will approve uh, Janice Andrews on doing more edition with Kalmahul as a cover artist. And Keeper Origins is actually the prequel series to Keeper Chronicles which I will start reading uh, this year. I think I will start the first book A Threat of Shadows either next month or in October. But yeah, this cover art turns out pretty damn good in my opinion. And finally, we have arrived at the last section of SFS Spotlight. It is time to talk about some new noteworthy release uh, for books that have been released. And the first one will be for the conclusion to the Rook and Rose trilogy by M.A. Carrick. I haven't read anything by these authors yet, but every booktubers I know who have tried reading this series, all of them loved it and I think that's just a sign that I will have to try to read this trilogy. And not only that, there is another concluding volume being released already and this is for The Pattern of the World by J.T. Greathouse. The first book in the trilogy, The Hand of the Sun King, is one of my favorite debut and I think it is so underrated. I think it deserves so much more love and readership. Uh, but honestly, the second book did not click with me too well. It was a bit disappointing and I hope uh, the third book in the series, The Pattern of the World, will conclude the Pact and Pattern trilogy satisfyingly. I will keep my fingers crossed it will happen because I do not want this trilogy that started out so well to end with a whimper. It will have to end with a bang. But the cover art matches the previous two books and I think it looks beautiful. And finally for the last note with the release and the last topic of today's video, there are so many, so many self-published, so many great and promising self-published fantasy books being released this month. And it is too much to mention in one video, like Runelight, A Card Mage, and many more. Instead, I will just link Rob J. Hayes' list of self-published fantasy books being released this month in the description down below. Make sure to check it out. Seriously, there are many great and promising self-published and indie books being released uh, this month, especially on August 1st. So that's it. That's a wrap on SFF Spotlight episode 34. As you can probably tell, there are a lot of news being spotlighted today. I hope I have succeeded in delivering this information as effectively and efficiently as possible. 
But anyway, as always, do let me know what you think about all the news that I spotlighted today. And of course, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction of this video, let me know which background do you prefer, this background with this bookshelf or my usual video's background. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.